to win a game. Joining us now on the Real Deal Footy Show, we have the coach of the Maribna Football Club, Blake Campbell. Blake, how are you, mate? Good, Foxy. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Blake, I've got to tell you, uh, a lot of pundits are saying that at last Maribna have got their act together, and I think you'll be remembered as a bloke that started off. You, you've started playing the juniors, and, and you're doing a terrific job with it. Was that always in your mind? Was it going to be a 12-month thing, let's have a look at them, and then play the kids, or is it just something you were steadfast at doing? Oh, look, it was, um, I suppose, when you look at the footy club and, and what we've done over the last nine or ten years, uh, we've, had a, we've had a successful era in terms of being probably up there and contending in, in finals and being able to compete with the top sides, but we haven't been able to actually win a premiership in the last 10 years. Um, so I'll probably analyse things at the end of last year. Um, really wanted to have a look at things last year, um, just see where the list was, just see where we were going to go and, and probably got to the end of last year and thought, well, what we've tried to do in the last nine or 10 years hasn't worked, hasn't worked in terms of winning a flag and that's what we want to we want to do at the club is we want to win a premiership. We haven't won one for 30 years. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to... It, it's a fine line as well between having a crack and playing the kids. We wanted to make sure that if that if we did play the kids, we actually had a good crop coming through. Because um, it is you can you can play the kids and them kids not be up to it and you know cop some real hidings and that really puts you puts you even further back. Uh, but we probably looked at the list and realised that we do have some good kids coming through. So, you know, for the next 12, 18 months, we want to really play these kids and hopefully we find some kids that we may not have found if we had a recruited five or six guys. Blake, some of the younger fellows are playing and I mean you work with them closely, we only get to see them every now and then but they are real talents. Dean Smith, Jai Simkin, Reese McKenzie and a boy called Clayton Oliver. Tell us a bit about, we'll start off with Clayton Oliver. Yeah, Clayton Oliver's a real talent. He's a, he's an Echuca boy. Um, he, he got friends with, with Jai Simkin and Jake Cormick and a couple of the Marupna boys and we're lucky enough to get him to get him over in the under-16 system, and he, he's a he's a real talent. He's with the Bendigo Pioneers at the moment. Um, he's uh, he runs really well. He's a he's a good contested mark for his size. Uh, we think he'll end up being a midfielder. Um, yeah, we'll probably lose him next year to the Pioneer system, uh, but at the moment he's having a real impact. He's he's only a 16, 17 year old kid, so uh, got a lot of footy ahead of him, and hopefully that's that's for the footy club. Okay, Dean Smith and Jai Simkin. Yeah, look, Dean Smith. Uh, Dean Smith's a real. Yeah, he's played. He's played a lot of senior footy in the last 12 months with the club. Uh, he's a real in and under, hard at it type player. The type of players that you want at the footy club. Uh, we've given him some roles this year on on some some key opposition players. Uh, we think he'll really develop into a really good inside midfielder. Uh, Jai Simpkin. Um, yeah, this kid. This kid is he's very very good. Um, yeah, he can still play under 16s footy. He's he's senior game he played. He kicked three and had 20 odd possessions. Um, Probably for us as a club, we don't think we'll, we'll see him that much, to be honest. Yep. He's got big country duties every second week, and uh, we think next year he'll be in the Bush Ranger system and probably won't see him that much at Marupna. Young um, Reese, Reese McKenzie. Um, yeah, this this crop is a really good crop. Reese McKenzie's a, a winger type, uh, beautiful foot skills, left and right side of his body. Probably one of the best runners at the footy club. Um, yeah, these are the kids coming through that we think you know, we're going to take Marupna to that, to that elusive flag, hopefully. One of the hardest uh, nuts to crack, it. one of the most gifted players that I've seen come into this competition in a long time is Daniel Lewis. And I think, you know, he's he's got everything. He's got the most unbelievable vertical leap for a boy his size that I've ever seen. He's an absolute gentleman on the footy field. I, I think you're probably getting through to him now. Is that is that fair? It's probably you, you took 12 months to learn a bit about each other. If I'm wrong there, tell me. I don't mind. But he seems to be playing a lot better footing now. This is only my opinion to what he was last year. Yeah, look, he, Louis, we probably focused on him a lot last year, which is fair enough because he's such a good player. Uh, we'd obviously like to have a few of him. Um, but playing him, playing him a little bit higher up the ground this year, like I reckon we were fairly predictable with him last year on opposition sides probably caught on to us a little bit and started to float guys back in front of him and you know he's competing against two or three guys week in, week out. So we wanna give we wanna free him up at up at times as well and he's actually really fit. He likes going through the midfield. He could be he could be our best midfielder, he could be our best backman, he could be our best forward. Um, we're pretty mindful that if we're gonna win games, he needs to be kicking a few goals. So um, yeah, we'll play him anywhere. We could play him on the wing, we could play him in the ruck. Um, but we think he's settled. Like he, he didn't do a pre-season last year. He's had a full pre-season this year. Um, his body's going pretty well at the moment. So um, yeah, we've got to support him as well and make sure we don't just rely on him. Now the other fellow you've obviously got your point across too, and he's playing wonderful football. I think we've played eight, nine games this year. And Simon Russell, he's been in your best six times. 
Yeah, well, he's another local guy. Uh, one of the things with, with recruiting, we wanted to try and get as many Maroochydore boys back to the club. He's one of many, with, with Trent Frey as well being another one. Simon Russell hadn't played footy for about 18 months, come back from a knee reconstruction. Um, so, yeah, he's had an outstanding year. He's a, he's a real tough in and under type player. Uh, been playing a bit on the back flank just to try and ease him into it this year. Obviously coming back from a knee, but we think he'll he'll end up being a genuine midfielder for us down the track. Yeah, the big fellow, he's a, he's a real popular bloke. He's very, very good with the media, and I think he's got a huge, when his football days are over, he could be really big in the media. Big Aussie. Can he get back into the side, or has he got plenty of work to do yet? Yeah, I, I have no doubt that he can he can get back in there. He's a he's a focal point that we we probably lack up up forward at time to to free to free Big Louie up. Um, yeah, was he's come back from two hip operations, so um, pretty mindful. We played him probably played him too early. Um, you know, he's coming back from a twelve week recovery, and we played him after about eight weeks. So we probably copped a bit of criticism from playing him too early. Um, really want to be mindful of when he does come back in the scene as he's ready to go. I think he's played three games in the twos now, maybe only two. Uh, he kicked four on the weekend. He moved He moved as good as he has since he's come back on the weekend. But uh, I only said to him the other night that when he comes back in, I want to make sure he's knocking on the door. And um, yeah, Whether that's this week, next week, the week after, um, yeah, we, we think he'll get back in there at some stage. On a personal level, Blake, has, has the body told you no? My playing days are up. It's now time for me to coach from the outside looking in. Um, oh, look, not the body. Uh, probably, probably just mentally. Um, yeah, my main role at the footy club is is to coach. Uh, probably when I play, the coaching suffers. And um, so, look, I, I probably analyse things after the Tat game. Um, didn't have a great game against Tat, um, but you know, just I just want to be on the on the bench and I want to coach. We've got so many young guys out there. Um, yeah, I want to make sure we get to the end of the game and I can give them feedback. Yeah, when I'm playing, sometimes I, it's hard to know who's playing well, what impacts they're having. Um, so, and I, I enjoy waking up Saturday morning knowing I don't have to go and play. So I think that's probably telling me that mentally I'm, I'm done. I always felt better about it on Sunday mornings when you could actually get out of bed. <laughs> because uh, after a hard Saturday, there was nothing worse. Um, did you think that you would be as well placed as what you are, like in house. From the outside looking in, a lot of uh, footballing pundits in the competition would have thought that Marupna were just going to be decimated on field this year. But you've certainly held your own, haven't you? I think myself. Yeah, look, it's 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 a fine line that we we you know in terms of our expectations, we play every game hoping that we that we win, and we we knew with inside the footy club that we trained as hard as we've ever trained this preseason, trained a lot harder than we did last year. We've got. You know, we've got a lot of guys, like, I think on the weekend we had 16 or 17 guys actually that played on the weekend actually trained with us throughout the week. It was the same in the pre-season. We don't have many travellers. So we felt that we could get that real togetherness as a group. Um, our practice matches, we won every practice match we played. Um, so our form was OK. And in terms of sitting well placed, you know, we still think that we could be sitting a little bit better than actually what, what we are at the moment. Um, yeah, we've got things to work on like everyone. Um, but yeah, we've got no doubt if we bring effort to the game, we competed well with the Swans round one. We obviously beat United. Competed well with Tat for a half. We've had a couple of bad games um, for for the club, uh, but we think that yeah we're going to finish the year really strong. Now, have I missed anybody in that list of players that uh, I've given you there? Is that, your your rucks are obviously holding their own, and uh, your on ball brigade's doing well enough for you? Yeah, I think Lockie Devine's probably just because he's six foot four and he looks like he's he's about twenty five. Uh, he's only a nineteen year old kid. Straight out of the thirds, he's been in our best the last two weeks. Yeah, you know, he's going to be a future fullback, centre half back for the footy club. We think we can build our back line around him. Um, so he's been, yeah, he's he's having a really good year, and uh, we've got a lot of hopes for this kid. He loves his footy. Um, you know, Kane Greening's another one. He's only a you know, 20 year old kid as well, even though he's a Kingapna boy. Uh, we just think we're, we're we're getting a group of eight or ten guys. I think I asked him at training last night. We had a bit of a game at the end, and I said anyone over the age of 25 go over to the right and not one bloke went over there so um, we had a good laugh about it and that's a pretty good sign for the footy club I reckon. Now the, the other question I must ask you, Marubna go in as favourites against Shepparton, Shepparton haven't won <laughs> since Noah was a boy and Brad's mob knocked you off, how was that between the two of you, was everything fine with it? Yeah we spoke about it before the game and Brad slipped me a couple of bucks and we just you tried, did the right tried thing to throw it? things around a little yeah. bit. Um, but nah, look, it was. <laughs> what about the old man, Desi? Where does he sit when that sort of goes? No, nah, he, he obviously had a win. He, he couldn't lose that day. Yeah. So, um, but nah, there was. You know, it's disappointing not not to lose to Brad. It was disappointing to lose the game in general. Yeah. So, 
um, you know, ha happy for Brad and I hope those guys have a have a win and hopefully we can get one back at them at the end of the year and we go one all at the season's end. Well, I hope everybody out there has uh, witnessed Blake this evening. He's from a fantastic family. The Des Campbell's a legend in the competition. Brad in his own right's a great bloke. Not enough known about Blake Campbell, and uh, as you can see, he is the real deal, and we wish you every success for the remainder of the year, mate. No, we, we are wrapped from where we sit. Are you going to you start doing. picking us, you blokes? Or? No, I, I never will, but uh, <laughs> some of those other blokes might. The blokes have got no idea. John Ryan will tell you after the end of the day that he he's picked doesn't picked it, does he? No, hey, hey mate, I'm telling you right now, he doesn't like anyone whose surname begins with C. Anyone who's got red hair? <laughs> so you're gone. There's not many redheads around. No, uh, well, well, I'll tell you what, have a look at your centre forward, mate. I reckon he's put her in. But good on you, Blake. Thanks for joining us, and we All wish right. you well for the rest of the year. Good, good on you, mate. Thanks, Abbas.